I'm going to read some scriptures this morning out of Daniel chapter 5. If you'd like to read along with me. I'm going to read my scripture and I'll ask Brother Don to lead us in prayer. Daniel chapter 5 and verse 1. Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem that the king and his princes and his wives and his concubines might drink from them. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines drank from them. And they drank wine and praised the God of gold and of silver and of brass and of iron and of wood and of stone. So, at one time I was on the other side. And I pretty well know what these scriptures is talking about. There was a time in many of us in our lives we didn't pay much attention to God whatsoever. But we like to have good times. And many times we thought that we was having good times. Bill Sizer here and his, the king, he had made a great feast here to a thousand of his lords. We see as he began to get this thing all wound up together, it looks like they were preparing for a great party and going to have a good time. The Bible said they drank wine, they praised the gods of gold, and of silver, bronze, iron, wood, stone. What is said here, they was having a good time, and they was going to have praise in the things of the world. But they're leaving God out. And just like many times, the people in this world that likes to party, there's a payday for these things that we do in life that is contrary to what God would have us to do. So Belsizer and his people, as they begin to have their party, they sent and got these gold and silver vessels that came out of the house of God. And they began to drink wine out of them. What they was doing, they, is they was having this party, and they bought the golden vessels that was taken out of the temple of the house of God. They had defiled the things of God. And when you start defiling the things of God, there is going to come a payday to that. The Bible said in Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 1, Wine is a mockery. Strong drinks is rageous, and whosoever is deceived there by is not wise. Right. And the Bible speaks strongly about this. And I know exactly what they're talking about in Proverbs chapter 23. 
In verse 29 and 32, listen what he said about it. Who had a woe? Who had sorrow? Who had contentions? Who had babbling? Who had wounds without a cause? Who had the redness of eyes? They that turn long at wine. They, they that go and seek mixed wine. Look not upon it when it is red, when it give it its color in the cup, and when it move it itself about. At least it bite, bite is like an otter or a serpent, and it stings like an otter. Amen. What he is saying, you're going to have some bad results out of that. And as we see so many times, I've seen it and I've had it myself. I'd come up with wounds without a cause, and I didn't know how it happened. I'd get home, didn't know how I got home. Didn't know what I said or what I had done. And as you go on like that, if you ever get further enough, you start defiling the things of God, there's something will happen in your life. And Daniel chapter 5 and verse 4, listen to what they said. They drank wine, they praised the gods of gold, of silver, of brass, and of iron, of wood, and of stone. What he is saying there, they was glorifying everything except you don't hear God's name mentioned in it. They're leaving him out. Daniel 5 and 3. When they brought these golden vessels and things out, and they began to drink out of them. And they went further enough, they had defiled the things of God, and all of a sudden the Bible said, you know, I want to tell you something. Uh, as you think sometime when everything is going great, uh, and when you think you're going to have a great time, uh, uh, they <laughs> something will happen unexpected. God steps in. This is what happened Daniel 5 and 5. He said in the same hour, the same hour that this party was getting wound up, the Bible said, came forth the fingers of a man's hand. It rolled over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the parts of the hand that rolled it. As he was going here enjoying himself and having a big time, all at once here this hand appeared on the wall and it began to ride on there. And the Bible said in verse 6 of chapter 5, when, uh, when God stepped in, the old king got troubled real bad. And the Bible said, Then the king's countenance was changed. His thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his lines were loosened. His knees smote one against the other. What he done when he looked over here on the wall uh, and he seen this hand writing on that wall uh, and which we know that God was doing this. Uh, and as he was writing on that wall, uh, it troubled that old man. Uh, it shook him up. And the Bible said it scared him so bad that his knees was knocking together. Uh, I'm telling you, when you get that scared, you are scared. Right when everything was going good, God stepped in. And the king began to want to know what the answer was about that. See, he couldn't read it. He didn't know what was happening. Daniel 5 said the old king cried aloud, and he said, bring the astrologers, the child ends, uh, the soothsayers. The king spoke and said to the wise man of Babylon, whosoever shall read this writing and show me its interpreted shall be clothed with a scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. He was willing to pay a big price to get an answer for this. But as we can see, when God steps in, man, ain't going to be much help to you. Amen. 
When God brings His judgment, man cannot change it. The Bible says in Daniel 5, 8, 9, He said, And He came in all the king's wise men, but they couldn't read the writing. They didn't know what it meant. Nor made known to the king of it. Then was the king, uh, Belsad, was great in the trouble, and his countenance changed, uh, and uh, his lords were astonished. Uh, see, he was one my answer, and he couldn't get it, and he was uh, getting scared more and more all the time. You know, when you get in trouble, your friends ain't going to be much help to you. The first thing I thought of after I got saved, you know what I thought of? My friends. When I got in trouble, I didn't have nothing until I got back out and got some money. That's right. Your friends is in your back pocket. That's right. And if you ain't got nothing in your bill for, you ain't got no friends. People can't help you. This is what Proverbs 25 and 19 tells you. Confidence in an unfaithful man in a time of trouble is like a broken tooth in a foot out of joint. That's pretty bad, ain't it? People can't help you. But listen to what the psalmist said in Psalm 49, 6 and 7. They that trust in their wealth and boast in themselves and the multitude of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. There ain't nothing I can give God to bring you out of it when a judgment hit. That's right. You'll have to suffer whatever God brings. But there is someone can help. <coughs> Proverbs 18, 24 says, A man who had a friend must to show himself friendly, but there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother, and that friend is Jesus Christ. Amen. See, if he hadn't left God out of his life, that handwriting would never come on the wall. That's right. He couldn't understand what was happening. So they got a hold of old Daniel, a man of God, brought him in. So he come in to see what was going on. So listen what Daniel told him, 522. And he's, and thy his son old Belsazer has not humbled thy heart that thou knowest all of this. He said, if you had your humbled your heart, you'd know just exactly what that writing was. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I thank God today. <clears throat> That when I saw the handwriting on the wall, I knew what it was. Amen. I'm very blessed. Very lucky. But Daniel told him, he said, if you had humbled your heart, you would know what this is. Listen what Daniel told him, Daniel 5, 23. I want to tell you, when you leave God out of your life, you're headed for a collision course. He said, but thy, but thy, uh, Daniel 5, 23, but has thou lifted thyself up against the Lord of heaven? Put himself higher than the Lord. And they have brought the vessels out of the house of the house before thee. Thy, thy lords, thy wives, thy concubines have drank from them. And thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold and brass and iron and stone, which see not, hear not, and know not. Here you're praising all this stuff that ain't worth much to you. But listen what else he said. And the God And whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, has thy not glorified. He said, You praised everything in the world here, 
except the one that give you the only breath of air that you breathe. You left him out. He said, Thou art weighed in the balance, and you're found wanted. Sin outweighed the goodness of God. Have you ever thought what happened? God put us on a scale? Where would you turn out to be? Would sin outweigh the goodness that you do for God? Listen to what Romans 6, 23 said. The wages of sin is death. It brings two kinds of death. It'll bring a physical death and it'll bring the spiritual death. But the gift of God is the eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Sin will bring death upon a human being. The Bible says we live for God had to put an extension on our lives. That's right. Sin was shortening her life. <clears throat> Have you ever noticed and read the Bible back in the old days, people lived to be hundreds of years old? Today in time, you're lucky to make it to 25. Now something happened. Why? Why people's their lives span is getting shorter and shorter because of more sin increasing in this world. That's right. Daniel 5 and 37. In that night, the same night that party started, that same night, and that night was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain. He lost his life. And he died. Simply because of defiling the things of God and leaving God out of his life, and worse than everything except the blessings that God has given us. Even all the way down, did not even thank Him for the breath of air that He was breathing. You wouldn't breathe another breath, wasn't for God giving it to you. None of us wouldn't even make it out of this building if it wasn't for the Lord and the blessings of Him. Our lives are in the hands of the living God. Everything we have is a gift from God. That night, Bill said, died. So if God was to weigh you today, where would the scales go? Would sin outweigh your goodness? Or are you prepared to meet God? It's something to think about. And people, the old devil is on the rampage. And it's going to get worse instead of better, I'm afraid. I'm not a prophecy preacher. But I can't find nothing much that ain't been fulfilled in the Bible. He could come any day. He'd give us after opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. In the first chapter of Proverbs, he said, When your fear come, you just make a profession of faith because you're scared. He said, I will not hear you. Because I have stretched out my hand and stretched out my hand and you will not accept none of it. Then want no reproof. And when you get scared, I will not answer you. It's dangerous. But I don't know how far God would go with the human. But there is a deadline. Don't know. None of us know. Some of us seem like we get away with stuff for years and years and years, and some of them don't get away no time. We just don't know. But Bill Sazer, that one night, got him. Yeah. 
because he defiled the things of God. As they give us an invitation hymn this morning, if you're here, you need to make a decision. Whether to rededicate your life or come to know the Lord as your Savior, or unite with this church or whatever it might be, step out and come.